Hi everyone, Claire's Crafty Corner has organised another one of her legendary crafters collaborations. Now, this is my contribution towards it. I will be making dragons and you will find at the end of this video, I'll put the link probably somewhere up here to take you to the rest of the collaboration. There are a lot of awesome artists involved in these collaborations, so please do go ahead, enjoy a good binge watch, grab yourself a cup of tea and click on that link. And don't forget, if you don't spot the link at the end there, it's also down in the video description. Into a lovely sunny craft room for a change. <laughs> Let Dresden have sent me some moulds and it is the Hear no evil, which is it? That way around, hear no evil. See no evil, speak no evil, little dragon mould. I've ended up with three sets of these because I bought myself a set and somehow that order got duplicated. I'm not entirely sure how, but in the meantime, Let's Resin had sent me a set because they know I love dragons. So I've got three sets and I absolutely love them, so I'm chuffed to bits. The charity that I support, that's Acorn Children's Hospice, will be having these to sell in their little shop and apparently these still sell, this sort of thing will sell very, very well. So I'm pleased about that. Now, I'll let you into a little secret. I already have one of the sets in mould and with these I have used the chameleon powders from the tiny turner so I'm extremely excited about demolding these as you can imagine and then we'll be ready to demold by the end of this video and also I will of course show you because I'll do some more <laughs> I'll show you how we put the powders into them although you've probably seen that before so I should just show you quite quickly how we do that at the end of this video I'm going to try doing them three different ways because I've got three different set different moulds basically that's what this boils down to so, now what I have discovered is you can turn these inside out which makes it much easier to paint your pigment powders and things on so that's handy isn't it the only thing is you can't really it's a bit difficult to see what you <laughs> which bits of which once they're inside out but let's flip them all through now what I'm going to do is do the eyes on these ones with silver and the spikes down their spine. Now we can always enhance that a bit more afterwards with pens, but for now I think, I think, I think, I think, what I'm going to do is actually just use a metallic powder. And as we're using Let's Resin moulds, let's use a Let's Resin metallic powder. This is the silver one from their metallic set. So let's see how we get on with this. Got a really small brush here. Now it's really hard to tell what's where with these little dragons once you've got them inside out. But there's the ah, oh, there's the spiky bit down his tummy. So we're just going to paint it on. Now, as I said, I'll wish you through this little a bit of, because we have you have seen me do this before and many other artists, I'm sure. But this is how you'd use your chameleon powders and anything else like this that you want to get um, onto the surface of the mould. Now where's the spikes down his back? Here we are. Let's go. Like, shaking the surplus off into the lid because that's nice and easy to then pick it up next time. Don't forget you can put details in with marker pens afterwards. I've got some proper resin edging pens that I find really useful for that sort of thing. I'll show you those when we get to that stage. But all I'm going to do is work my way around all of these with the silver. I'm going with silver because I've largely done that goldy colours with the other ones. And there's the ends of his little claws. Now, if you end up with the powders where you don't want them, it's very simple. Get yourself a wipe. Yeah, I'm, the ones I'm using are Wonder Wipes, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen me use these before. They're the sort of thing that tradesmen use for getting paint up and things, and they are safe for silicon. So we're just getting it off where I don't want it. I'm trying to leave it in his claws. We're probably going to end up doing those in again with a pen later. I'm trying to go around his eyes and his face, though. Right, so that's that one done. And we're going to turn him back through, back through the right way. There's a bit I didn't want. See how easily it comes off with a with a wipe. But not so much with your hands. So you will get some of it on your hands, but there we are. So that's him done inside. Now you can actually just reach in and do these as well. I mean, I can see where his claws are now, so I could do those while I'm here, couldn't I? But there's some bits that are really quite difficult to get to, like his eyes and stuff. So that's why I tend to, if I can turn a mould inside out to do powders, I will. There, I think we're there with that one. So I'll wish you through these next ones and uh, I'll be back with you shortly.
Right, so we have resin. I'm going to put this on my little stirring doobry thing so I can ignore it for a bit. Now, anybody who's got one of these stirring things, they are really good. I have to say it is really good. This is the Stoyo one. The only problem I have is making sure well, I've got it totally centered because I use paper pots and that happens. It's probably going to keep happening. Uh, anyway, yes. So the pot's going around instead. I'm going to end up holding it anyway. So, yeah. I probably should just use a silicon pot. That would be better. Anyway, what we're going to be using is just some actual pigments. So and we'll chuck in some pigments. And the pigments are from Let's Resin. So, purple, green, and rose red, which is like a deep, really nice vibrant pink so the purple i want it quite a quite a ten uh an intense purple i think it doesn't need to be completely opaque nothing wrong with a see-through dragon well they're magical beasts aren't they so why wouldn't they be potentially see-through i was quite tempted to put a bit of mica powder in as well i've done a lot of work with mica powder lately and only, apart from anything else i want to see how um how shiny these molds are and really, I just wanted a flat colour to do that with. I'm causing a load of bubbles, which is really silly of me. Could also add some glitter, I suppose. We could, couldn't we? But I'm not going to. <laughs> but what I am going to do... Oh, isn't that a lovely colour? What I'm going to do is kind of half fill him. And then have a look. These bolts are quite see-through, which is really quite useful. Because you can see whether you've got any bubbles trapped. So we're going to give them a little bit of a squeeze. And make sure we've got any bubbles. It's, it's, it's their ears I am worried about. And up under their chins. Looks like I should have gone up underneath his chin with the silver as well. But never mind. I think they're okay now. As I can see a couple of little bubbles trapped, but nothing major. I think that'll, I think that'll be okay. It is handy that you can actually see, yeah, so that's good. Now have I mixed enough? Now I'm going to need to mix up a little bit more. I'm using, by the way, is Apex High Gloss because it's kind of my go-to resin. Okay, you can just, you can see all the bubbles are popping out of that anyway. I always tend to mix in bubbles, I'm hopeless. <laughs> so we'll let that just sit, let the bubbles come out and we'll move on to our next colour. <laughs> Rose red, it's actually pink. Look at that, isn't that lovely? <laughs> They're going to be quite girly, these dragons, aren't they? See, there's so little of that lilac in there that it won't have uh, really affected the colour much anyway. Um, I just wanted to reuse my pot and the thing, <laughs> and I knew this one was going to be pink. It looks pink in the bottle, so. So, again, going part way up, getting his little head filled, give his little ears a squeeze. I think that's about it. I think I should have gone up under the chin more with the silver. I'll get more familiar with the shape of these moulds and where the colours go and things as time goes on. It's really warm in the craft room today and this is a the sort of resin that cures really... Um, it's usually an overnighter, but I can already see that the things that I put in to cure this morning, i.e. the dragons that I've done with the chameleon flake, uh, flakes, powders, chameleon powders, they're nearly ready to do mould. So this won't take long. Going into the last one with green, just going to get some mixed up. Right, I've decided with this one I want like an aqua blue green. So I've got some blue, which I'm going to put in while it's actually in the stirrer. You can see what the stirrer is doing then, can't we? Right, so there's the blue. rather nice in itself isn't it and then some green kind of like a teal color almost i think i think that's what i'm after yes that's the exact color i was after i've probably got that color somewhere if i tried hard enough <laughs> well this one's ended up with silver where i shouldn't have got silver i think because i forgot to do his tummy so i ended up doing it in the mold i think it has shook down onto the bottom of his chin and his face and all sorts of places 
so we'll just have to see what that one turns out like but yes this is the colour I was looking for 17 pumps off each bottle by the way anybody who is using pumps standard uh, resin bottle pumps now this one I've noticed is a little bit front heavy so he does tip slightly so I'm just going to put I've got a little little plastic thing I'm just going to put to raise the side where his feet are up just very very slightly right we're going to leave them now then and I will see you for the demold of these so these have cured really fast because like I said it's really warm in this craft room today and of course these are quite deep molds I wouldn't want to go too much deeper than this with um, a regular depth type of resin I really wouldn't want to this really is pushing the limits um, a deep cast would probably be more sensible or even something like a polyurethane <laughs> just look at that color <laughs> um no i know you didn't see me pull these but that is inferno from the tiny turner now the it, it did crinkle a couple of little bits at his points getting them out so i'm going to leave the other one just a little bit long before i pull him out I think I did. I overestimated how much that had sped up the curing time. And of course, now I'm going to have to go and have a damn good hand wash. So we've got Inferno, uh, Inferno for the orange and Starlight for the, the gold. But as you can see, that flicks through green and all sorts. It's incredible. Right. The, other, the first one I got out, that's come out absolutely beautiful, as you probably saw earlier. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? I've somehow ended up with three sets of these. Let's resin sent me one. I bought one and um, I think I might have accidentally duplicated the order. You know when you shouldn't really be on Amazon at night when you've had a few glasses of wine? I think it might be one of those. Anyway, I've also got the egg that goes with it and this is a little pot. So I thought we'd have some fun. I've got the, I've got some silver metallic powder from Let's Resin. And I thought we'd have a play with those beautiful ethereal powders and chameleon flakes that I showed you in a recent video as well. So I've got a selection of these, those together here. These are from the Tiny Turner and the stockist for these is Toonpish Craft. So that's where I got these from. Now, I've got a discount code for the dragons and for the resin that I will be using later. There isn't a discount code on these powders, I'm afraid. The margins on them are too small, I think, to, to be able to do that. However, I will put you the link from where to get them from. And trust me, they are fabulous value. They might look like tiny pots with very little in. Goodness, they go a long way. Right, let's get stuck in. So what we're going to do is put the colours into these pieces. Let's start with the egg first, because I haven't done the egg yet. Now, the lid looks nice and straightforward, but the base has got crystals around it and i believe you can turn it inside out that you can with the dragons as well although it makes them quite difficult to work on because you can't see what's what but yes look there's crystal bits so let's do those let's do all let's do the pop first basically now because i'm going to show you how we put the powders on for those who haven't seen it before and then um i'll fast forward you through the lid and the little dragons because, you know, it's, it's just more of the same, but I'll fast forward you through that. With the dragons, we're going to do his, the tummies, the claws, the eyes. We're going to do those in different colour, maybe the silver. And with the egg, we're going to be doing the crystals around the base, a different colour. So that's what we're doing. Now, uh, I've got to decide what colour to do the crystals around the base of this one. And I think, see this one? This ethereal powder is called Supernova. And it, as you can probably see... It shines blue. So let's go in with blue crystals, shall we? And then I think we'll have a, we have a green egg. I think so. Now I'm just using, well, this is a little paintbrush. I was just thinking the tip of this might be easier to get into the nooks and crannies. But for anybody who's not used ethereal powders or chameleon powders before either, um, basically all you do is you get a tiny bit on your brush. And with this particular brand, you need a very, very tiny bit on your brush. It goes an awfully long way and you burnish it into the surface of the rubber. You can see I had a tiniest little speck on my brush then and it's done that whole area there. So we're just going to work our way around and do that. Now, if you, again, for those of you who haven't used it before, the common questions I get asked about using powders like this onto the moulds are, does it work with all moulds? The answer to that is no. 
there are some molds that just aren't shiny or clingy enough for the powder to stick so you know you'll, you'll know very quickly if it isn't going to because it just won't stick <laughs> it'll just keep coming off on your brush it won't cover the mold at all the next question i get asked is do you have to top coat afterwards to make it to seal it onto the resin no you don't and the reason for that is that it actually kind of seals into the resin itself i think the resin just kind of melds into it and it uh, it just stays there now for some things you might want to go over the top coat because you can get an extra depth of shine and a real extra 3d-ness to it and all that sort of thing but that's purely cosmetic and it is entirely down to your choice if you've got a nice shiny mold you should get a nice shiny finish and it should be completely durable you won't be able to chip it off so this is what you're looking for. Can you see that's going really onto the surface of the mould? Right, I'll carry on round. You just talk amongst yourselves or something. I don't know. If anybody wants to sing, do a tap dance. You carry on. Okay, I'm just making sure I've got it everywhere I want to. Ooh, there's a bit I missed, I think. Yeah, there we are. Now, another question I often get asked. Is this stuff the same as nail art powders? Well, very similar. You can indeed use nail art powders. For this sort of thing uh, what you'll find is that amongst nail art powders and foils and there's all sorts of nail art materials that do transfer very nicely over into your resin crafts I like these ones because they're very very intense um, I've not found another powder or a nail art powder resin powder any of them really as intense as these and the next question I'm anticipating is what about the ones from Let's Resin? Because these are Let's Resin moulds, can I just say. The Let's Resin Chameleon powders and, and all of their, you know, all of their range are truly wonderful. I'm using these this time because these are even more intense than the intense ones from Let's Resin. So if I want a little bit more subtle, then I will go with the Let's Resin ones. I have to say they're still pretty intense though. Um, but for this, I wanted to go as vivid as I possibly can. I want these to be really in your face because the dragons are going to be. So, yeah, that's why I'm going going in with the, the tiny Turner ones. Now, the rest of this I'm going to do in a green. And for that, I've chosen Mermaid. Now, these are flakes. Another question I keep getting asked. I'm picking up a load of questions here, aren't I? Another question I keep getting asked is what, why? what's the difference between the flakes and the powders well the flakes are bigger bits look like that can you see you still burnish them onto your silicon let's try a smaller brush actually still burnish them onto your silicon um there's some molds that they won't work with which is kind of surprising because sometimes it's a mold that your um powders have worked beautifully with you brush them on and they kind of break down and I find that you get even more of a shine with these sometimes it depends how well you burnish them on it depends on the powder it depends on the flakes rather but can you see that gorgeous shiny effect so similar but different um, and you can get quite a mottled effect because if the flakes don't all break down completely you get like a mottling in there now this is going to take quite a while so again I am going to fast forward for you Okay, so look at that. That's amazing, isn't it? So that's completely covered. I've made a total mess. I will shake as much of this as I can back into the pot afterwards. It just is one of those things. Um, I should have done it on a sheet of paper. A little tip for you, because this, this stuff is quite precious. So you should do it on a sheet of paper so you can tip it out afterwards. I should have done that. Right, now what I'm going to do, I'll just show you how I tend to do a finishing touch. Now, this is with uh, ether. Now, the reason I do this is that sometimes, by the way, I'm not worried about the bottom of the bowl. That's going to end up just being black with some speckles on it. But as you can see, there will be bits where there's none of the ethereal powder and there's none of the green. There's little gaps because I will have missed. So what I tend to do, and this is where it can get a bit wasteful, I suppose, 
is get a big brush and go over the whole thing. And I tend to use a powder to do that with rather than the flakes, because you'll then get in the bits where you haven't got your powder. Now, I know a lot of you will be watching this and thinking, my goodness, that's expensive stuff and isn't she using a lot? Yeah, I am. Um, but I did want to show you what this could do on a big scale if you're feeling like you really want to treat yourself and go for it. Now, I did pay for these. Some of you will be thinking, well, it's all right, you don't have to pay for it. I do. I did pay for these. Um, these were in my last stash from Toonpish Crafts. I actually sent off for these and paid for them fair and square. But I just wanted to show you what you could do, really. So I'm not for one minute suggesting that you might want to do great big pieces like this. Um, yeah, it's not going to be a cheap exercise, but I just wanted to show you what you could do if you really wanted to push the boat out. But also, I've just done that complete coat on just the tiniest little puff of it. It goes such a long way. Right, my next job will be to have a clear up so I don't get all the wrong colours in the wrong places. So I will be back shortly. I'm just going to tap off any surplus. And I'll have a clear up. I've got a whole set of these. They're really lovely. Um, so I'm just going to use silver today. And again, we're just going to paint it on. I'm burnishing it onto the surface. If we get any of it where we don't want it, then we can simply wipe it off. But turning your mould inside out, if you can, makes life so much easier. <laughs> Might as well just turn that, uh, turn the egg back through the right way, because that's all completely the wrong way at the moment, isn't it? You can paint it, you can just reach inside your mould if you don't want to turn it inside out and, and paint it. Of course you can, you can do that if you want to. I just find this easier. If you can, some moulds you just can't, they're too rigid or whatever. But these are fairly soft silicon, um, quite easy to work with. So, yeah, we can with this. As you can see, I'm only putting a tiny bit on my brush in the hope that I'm not going to end up with it everywhere. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> you can see I've already got some down the one side. Some people, oh, another question, people ask questions and I like that. Um, another question I get asked is, why do you use brushes rather than makeup applicators? It's my personal preference, that's all. But, so see which works for you. Yeah, now as you can see, I've got a little bit of silver where I shouldn't have there. So we're gonna get a, a wipe. Uh, today's wipes, by the way, are brought to you by Wonder Wipes Spray and some kitchen roll, Ooh, which I've now just got in my tea, I think. So it's not, well, it probably is poison, isn't it? There we go, we can just get that off. So I know that these are his eyes. And as the spikes down his back are quite easy to, easy to work out where those are as well. So we can do those. Just going around getting off the bit where I've got around his eyes. We're doing any spikes down his back and then we're just going to cover him in the uh, inner colour. Any final details we can put in with a silver pen later. I've got some proper silver, well, all sorts of shades of metallic, um, proper resin edging pens that would be perfect for this. So let's have a look. Where's his spikes? There's his spikes. Look, can you see them all down his back here? So we're just going to get in there with a little dot of the silver. Again, the resin edging pens, we can put the put the silver in better with, you know, really highlight it afterwards as well with those once we've demoulded him later. But I quite like, if I can, to get some of the detail in while it's inside out. I'm going to turn him back through the right way at this point because it's going to get messy otherwise. Um, and also I can see where his little toes are now, so I can do that. Toes. Claws. They're claws. He's a dragon, you stupid woman. Right. Anyway. So I'll just show you how I put the how I'm going to put the powder around everywhere else. Now, obviously, you've got to get into some nooks and crannies here, but I'd rather do that where it's back through the right way, I think. And that's simply because it's just going to be, uh, yeah, it's just going to go everywhere, isn't it? So the colours I'm going to use on this one, do I use the flakes or do I use... Yeah, let's use the flakes. We're going back to the flakes. I'm working in a more confined space, so I'm hoping these will be a bit easier to control than they were in the egg. This one is called Basilisk. And look at that colour. Oh, this is, I should have set my camera the other way around. I am, uh, I am right-handed. And again, I'm going to go in with a final splash of another similar colour in the powders. Now, the reason I've gone in for flakes here is simply because I've got some done with the powders already. Um, and we're going to have a look at those in a different video. So I thought we'd, we'd focus more on the flakes in this one. 
You know what? I'm going to try my big brush in here. Because I'm going to get less waste, she says, splashing it everywhere. Um, because I'm in, you know, working in a, a space. Probably would have been easier to do it while it was inside out. I don't know. I'll leave that to you to experiment. I think it depends on the mould. I'm just now I'm prone to getting this all everywhere. And this might be, I was thinking this might be a better way to do it. I seem to be getting it everywhere anyway. Anyway, you get the, the you get the idea. I'll, I'll fast forward you. <laughs> you can politely pretend you haven't noticed what an almighty mess I'm making. And we'll do the same with all the others. So you can either watch or you can skip to the end when we do our D-moulds. That is going to do. Back to the egg. I'm still thinking on what to do with the inside. This area. And I might go over it with a normal chameleon powder. Uh, what's darkest berry looking? Where's arcane? Arcane. This is dark and scary looking. I think from a usage point of view, what I'm finding so far is probably stick with the powders. They are easier to use. Look how big an area that just did. That was with me spilling some as well. Yeah, I know this is extravagant. This is using a lot of powders. If you're practicing and just learning to do this sort of thing, you'd probably be sensible, really, like I should have done, to work with a powder that wasn't quite so precious. So maybe try some of the cheaper, bigger pots is what I'm saying of your uh, of, of these powders of chameleon powders if you just search chameleon powder get yourself some cheap bonds to learn with and then when you're feeling a bit confident and you're thinking right let's go for it maybe that's the time to treat yourself to these because as i said they're not the cheapest for a good reason they're fabulous value they go an awfully long way as i'm sure you can see but yeah this is wasteful you probably wouldn't normally want to do something this big with them because look at all that waste I've made. And I'm sure you'll do a better job of not wasting it than I have. <laughs> I've made a right mess. Okay, we just need to get in there now with the uh, with the resin. Oh, what I should have done before I washed my hands was turn this back through the right way, shouldn't I? Stupid woman. Stupid, stupid woman. This is going to go all over my hands now. Yes, I've dyed myself purple. <laughs> right, okay. Wash hands again. Right, so we're mixing up resin. I've got it, uh, a big pot of it on my little mixing thingy, which I'm just getting used to using. I will report back on how I'm finding this in the fullness of time, by the way, because I initially didn't want one of these. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll let you know how I get on with it. So far, it seems pretty good, but it does seem to have a tendency to go walk about. I don't think I've got it quite centred sometimes. Also, I think because I use a paper cup rather than a silicon one at the moment, um, it slides on this little mat. But so far, so good other than that. As long as I hold on to it for a second till I get it centred and it's OK. And I'm finding also that if I've got a bigger, heavier pot full of resin, then obviously it's better. It stays in place better. 
So that's been going for a while. I've put it on the AI setting so it's got like a timer. So now I'm going to put some colour in and the pigment I'm using is a Vista one. And that's quite interesting because you can see where the, uh, oh, you can see where the current is in the, uh, in the resin. I'm just using up the last of that Vista pigment. Um, I've got some of the Apex pigments that are a lot more, a lot stronger. So I shall be going back to those shortly. Once that one's used up, that'll do. Yeah, that's blacker. Right, put that over another pot because we're going to be mixing up another pot of it in a minute anyway. There we go. Right, let's see how much this egg takes. I can't see if there's any edges really there that's going to get bubbles trapped. There's a obviously there's a right angle at the bottom here. So I'm just going to go around that and give that a squeeze. Don't worry about dislodging your powders. They are stuck well and truly to the silicon, so it shouldn't be a problem. I've definitely got way too much silver up under this one's chin. Well, I did not intend to get silver under his chin. Maybe that'll look right. I don't know. Anyway, we have more resin mixing up. Don't think I'm going to dare put too much more in this pot. It'll be flash curing in the pot. But let's dip a little bit more in. There we are. So that's all we've done. We filled them halfway up. Well, not even halfway, just past their heads, basically. Just so that I could make sure I got no um, bubbles trapped in their ears and things. And then we just spin them up. Gonna need just a little bit more to do the last one, but uh, yeah. And we'll see you for the demold then, folks. Um, I have got three others ready to go that just have clear resin in. And we have got another one. Is it just one? Two. Oh, I don't know. I'm losing track. I think two that have got um, the chameleon powders in. Um, Okay, time for a big scale demolding, everyone. So you've probably seen this one. Bit of colour flips in that. See no evil. I need to redo my hear no evil because I messed his little little claws up by demolding him too soon. But yay for the colours. Right, now where did we get to? So where was the other one that was done like that? I think it's this one. So this is the Chameleon powders again. Forget which colours which. I'm gonna to have to go back through and I'll put them on. I'll put them in the video for me. <laughs> Big thumbs up for these cute little moulds. They are absolutely adorable. Let's clear a bit of space on here. There's something so fiddly. They're not too too difficult to demould either. They're coming out okay. Just need a little bit of force. They're quite nice and stretchy. Oh, I like him. I didn't get the colour into his ears, but I don't think it matters. I need to draw their eyes in. <laughs> He's lovely. So those are our chameleon powder ones. When I say draw his eyes in, I need to just put the uh, pupil in, don't I? Hang on. Let me just show you how I'm going to do that. I'll demonstrate it on the one I need to redo. Simple as that. And that's with an alcohol pen so that it won't come off. We do his little nose. Let's do his mouth as well. So that's all we're going to do for the eyes. And then the uh, we go for the champagne resin edging pen simply because I think that might be a little bit brighter. Well, lighter because there's already gold on these. Just bring out those tips just that little bit more. So I'm just running it along the edges of his spikes. Uh, no, I think I need gold. So let's go in with the gold on this guy. So the bits where I missed that I could have really done with some of the uh, the gold being, I can just touch him up with a little bit of the uh, the pen. Like that. And see, I couldn't get down there with his with the uh, the gold when I was doing the colour in the mould on all of those. So let's put that touch that in. We can do his ears. Let's do the tops of his ears. Let's do his little horns. Tops of his wings. 
and down the edge like so and that will dry really gold we'll touch more down the spikes there we are oh and we didn't do his toesies did we there we are just do his little toesies and little bits on his claws let's give him some little sharp little gold claws <laughs> look at your little face Right, that's our chameleon powders. I think you'll agree the colour flipping in those is just superb. There's everything from green through to orange in that one and it's basically purple. Now let's get out the clear ones and then we'll do the flakes last. I did get very messy making so many of these. Well, Nine Dragons is quite a lot to make in one go to be fair, isn't it? Don't you think? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got silverware I shouldn't have done in this. In all of them, in fact. Oh, I need to practice more, don't I? Well, this is the first use of these moulds, so for me. <laughs> so uh, I hope uh, I hope it's been the useful learning curve for you, because it certainly is for me. Which of these moulds are pretty sturdy. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so that one we want silver, don't we? So as we do each one, I am going to carry on putting the little details in for you. Uh, so, so a little bit more silver down his spikes. It's the same routine with all of them, really. So what do I think of the clear? I've put the details in. Quite like it. It's certainly a nice, simple technique. I mean, clearly, it's not as dramatic as this, is it? But it's still rather nice. So it's a good alternative and it is still translucent. Right, next one. This is the uh, sort of teal green. <laughs> yeah, I did get silver all over the place. Never mind. <laughs> so we go. Oh, I missed his little horns on this one, didn't I? There we are. Mm. Of course, you could go back over and colour some of this in if you wanted. Yeah, just pick up the uh, bits where I've got the wrong colours, like so, but uh, that's up to you. I'm leaving him because I think he's quite nice like that. There we go with that gorgeous purple. Let's see what this one looks like. I think what I'm seeing so far, basically, is that the... Um, there's a good reason that Let's Resin show them in their adverts with the chameleon powders. That is the, the sensible way to get a really dramatic effect. Big thumbs up on the moulds, by the way, because as you can see, because of their uh, funky shape, they are difficult to demould, but the moulds seem to be really sturdy. They're stretchy. I'm not feeling at all concerned about tearing them. And the detail in them is lovely. Oh, he's come out nice. Because he looks darker. Where the... Yeah. It's where the... Um, pigments are thicker because it's just a fatter bit of the mould, isn't it? So it's meant that the purple is highlighted more in his extremities. That's cool. <laughs> because if you've got any bits you missed in the silver anyway, you can touch them up like this. Some silver nail varnish. Mm -hmm. You could leave doing the silver entirely until after if you wanted. Or gold, whatever colour you have decided to go for. You could do the whole thing with a pen afterwards. So don't forget you don't have to make it fiddly like I have. You can do all of the detail with your pens after. <laughs> Darker colours are definitely better. There's another tip. Just from what I'm seeing so far. Okay, here we go then. We're going in with... Shall we do the egg first? I've been dying to see this egg. Let me zoom you in. So if you remember, these last ones, these were all chameleon flakes. Oh my, look at that. Green, blue, gold... 
lovely mould. I love the detail. I did get a couple of bubbles around the edge. I really should have paid a bit more attention there. But nothing major. And, you know, it's an organic looking thing, so I don't think it's going to matter. Can I suggest if you do these, by the way, you might want to think about using deep pour resin. The Apex High Gloss that I use is... It goes to a surprisingly good depth, to be honest, for, for a regular pour of resin. But I think it was pushing it, pushing the look just that little bit. It's a degas, because these did cure a bit too quick, and it would degas better in these intricate moulds if you use the less viscous resin, which deep pours tend to be. So I think probably I would veer towards a deep pour would be a bit of learning from this. Oh, look. Isn't that amazing? Do you remember how that ethereal powder just looked like a very pale... Oh, look. Oh, got my thumb now. looked like a very pale shimmery blue on the, uh, on the silicon. Oh, look. Got a little bit of sanding I need to do around there to make the lid fit. And it looks like it distorted slightly, which is a shame. But I can warm it up. I'll put it somewhere warm and we'll pop the lid on properly. And it'll reshape itself. I'll put it in the conservatory because the sun's out. And then I'll show you what it looks like after. Oh, no, it's gone. Okay, take that back. It's gone on anyway. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the colours flipping. So that was ethereal flakes. Uh, no, ethereal powders. And this was... Chameleon flakes. Okay, so we're on to our chameleon flakes now. I'm quite excited for these. I'm pretty sure I got the silver in the wrong place again. And like I said, I do need to practice doing that. It's not something I've done very much. And I think the silver has also floated around a bit with these. But we should have a hell of a good result anyway, I think. We'll soon see. And so far, the powder is the, the chameleon powders are the big thumbs up. Oh, and the mould, can I just say. I'm absolutely loving these moulds. I am going to be making tons of these. I might get Mark to demould them though. So making my hands hurt a bit. But that's just because the shapes are so intricate. It's just whatever you do, these are going to be a little bit of a straw to demould. But look, you can really be quite rough with the mould. I'm trying not to be. But the silicon must be good because it's just stretching and it's not tearing. Oh, there we go. Oh. So the flakes are nice as well. Okay, so we did silver on this one, didn't we? Yes, the flakes are gorgeous. <laughs> Look at the colour flips going on there. Fantastic. I'll do at the end then, folks. I will row them all up and we'll do a proper a proper look and verdict. I'll put them on a clean background so we can see them properly. Get some good lights on them so you can have a proper proper scrutiny of them. <laughs> That's nice. Really like that colour. I can't remember what this one was. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I definitely got silver where I shouldn't. But that, that's basilisk. I remember what that one was. Gosh, I've made a mess. Right. Details. By the way, coming up, I'm going to have a full detail test on all of these um, powders and flakes from Tiny Turner. Because I ha will shortly have all of them, I believe. And we can do a full a full on detail testing on them all. I've got a very small mould, um, little tiny frogs and things, and owls and all sorts. And so we'll be able to do like a sampler of them all. I'll do them with black backgrounds, white backgrounds. People have been asking what's the difference if you put a white background on it instead. Things like that. So we'll go through the whole lot and uh, 
yeah i'll show you them properly now hopefully that'll help you decide uh, that combined with this sort of video will help you decide if you want any of these flakes pigments or whatever and if so which ones you want because there's quite a range and as you know i'm not on commission for any of the for any of these pigments and flakes so here we are right aren't they gorgeous look at this lot so big showstopper the egg look at the color flip let's resin that you were the purpose of this video really your new molds well i think they're new they popped up in my emails and i thought i need those and somehow like i said i've ended up with three sets so that's them done with chameleon flakes painted onto the inside of the mold this although as i say i've damaged that one but that's what happens when you demold too early. Look, he's got no ears either. That's the chameleon powders. And these are just clear colours, which do work. So if you don't fancy tackling the clear chameleon colours, you could do these. Or you could just do them in a solid colour and then decorate them afterwards with your marker pens. Right. I'm going to get these into a much better light for you. I'm going to go and clean my hands. And we'll take some proper photos and have a real close look at the colour flipping. I think that's probably what you're going to see. <laughs> 